Let's dive deeper into this proxy battle and what might happen next. Bring in New York Times columnist Jim Stewart, who literally wrote the book on Disney. Jim, now that we've had a chance to see Nelson Peltz's at least initial argument, to me it, it seems like the biggest issue is rethinking the reason for streaming and the profitability of it, especially if Disney buys Hulu and making the case that Iger, for all that he's been great at, wasn't great at cost discipline. And even though he thought he wasn't paid enough, Pelt's arguing he was overpaid. Well, a, a couple of things here. I had to smile when I heard Nelson Pelt say, well, I know the movie business is difficult, but oh, streaming, we can really make that efficient and, and cut costs and increase profitability. And I, my thinking there is, well, good luck with that. There are so much money is being lost in streaming that if he's got, if he can solve that problem, then he he really is a genius. And going to the Iger question, I, re, that proxy statement he filed is so interesting. I'd call it, in terms of Iger, it's the iron fist inside the velvet glove. While he's sort of saying, oh, we want, we support Iger, we don't want to replace him. It's filled with criticism of Iger in there, starting with the acquisition of Fox. I mean, Putting aside whether that was a good deal or not, and I think Peltz makes some good points about it, nevertheless, that's water under the bridge. That was Iger's project. That was his deal. And when you attack the Fox acquisition, you are attacking Iger. Uh, that is not a flattering proxy statement for Iger, and I can understand why Iger would have bristled at the idea of bringing Peltz on the board, given the criticism he was leveling at Iger. Yeah, well, it sure seemed like Disney's board, in part, <laughs> brought Iger back to avoid having to deal with activists, with the idea that, that Iger has such credibility that this would calm everybody down. That doesn't seem to be happening. So if, if Peltz does get on Disney's board, does that uh, support the idea that there might be pressure for Iger to make this two-year tenure an actual two-year tenure and for this board to get some more discipline around CEO succession? Absolutely. And I don't I don't think there's any question that um, a glaring deficiency of the Disney board has been succession planning. Going back to naming Chapek, you know, which I don't think has ever really been satisfactorily explained why they picked him and then why, you know, two years later they felt they had had to get rid of him. And again, the sequence of events in the proxy suggests that helps his conversations. First, he's talking to Chapek. Then Chapek says, no, you can't talk to me. You have to talk to the CFO. Well, that's bizarre right there. And then secondly, a few days later, uh, Chapek is out. So what role did the pressure from Peltz have in that decision? Uh, putting that aside, which I think is a very important question for people getting yeah. ready to vote in this proxy fight, the, um, the, the issue is, you know, is to me, is he's cutting Iger off. He's saying, this is it for Iger. You know, he's going to get two years. Two years is not mm -hmm. that long in that, in that business to turn around an aircraft carrier like Disney. And he's saying, no, that's, we, we're going to get him out. We're going to get somebody else in. Again, that is right. not very supportive of Iger.